And uh, actually it comes up in our reading three times a year. So uh, I talk about this a lot. Um, and so today I thought I would talk about a particular aspect of this and, and that's to talk about uh, demons and the, and the demonic. We don't talk about it much these days. Uh, it's amazing how it's become quite popular in media. You know, there's whole uh, television series about uh, finding real ghosts and whole, uh, uh, you know, movie franchises on demon-possessed people and all of that. And a good 80 to 90 percent of that's just baloney. But that doesn't mean that demons aren't real. Demons are most commonly experienced by us the same way angels are most co commonly experienced by us. Interesting, isn't it? Because demons are only fallen angels. And how is that? How do we experience angels or demons? In our thoughts. They come to us as thoughts. And if we engage those thoughts, they gain more control over us. And this is why the spiritual discipline of discerning your thoughts is so important. Right? Most, well, I would, I would imagine most of us here could say that a good deal of the thoughts that come to our mind, we really have no idea where they come from. Just, woo, doo, ding, where did that come from? Woo, just coming, going, this thought, that thought, woo, wee, right? This is why it's extremely important, young people, listen, not to say something just because the thought comes to your mind. You've got to take the time to discern the thought, right? Is this, is this, and how do you discern it? Well, St. Paul teaches us. Is it going to build up? Is it going to edify? Is it going to encourage? Right? If, if what I say is going to encourage or edify or make stronger or help someone else, then it's probably an angelic thought. It's probably a godly thought. But if it's going to put someone down even if you're just joking. By the way, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 18, I think, maybe 17, says, like, I memorized this as a teenager, right? Like a madman throwing balls of fire and death is the one who insults his neighbor and says, I was just joking. Like a madman throwing fireballs and death is the one who insults his neighbor and then says, oh, I was, it's a joke. I don't, can't you take a joke? I'm just joking. No, 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 no. You just let a demon speak through your mouth. Right? It's like, it's like taking a little knife and cutting somebody and said, oh, it was just a joke. I'm just joking. Yeah, but I'm bleeding. You may have been joking, but I'm bleeding. Right? And you know, your friend may put up a brave front and say, oh, okay, da, ha, 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 ha. But inside, it hurt. That's why whenever it happens to you, you want to get back, right? You want to say something to get back at them. Why do you want to do that? Because it actually hurt you. Even if you joke about it and stuff, it hurt. So this is why we have to be careful. We have to be careful what we say. Because not every thought that occurs to us is a good thought. Right? And of course, we read about these demoniacs today, and the problem with bad thoughts is if you continue to entertain them, 
right? The thought comes, oh, look at this thing you shouldn't look at. Or, uh, uh, you know, you would really be happy if you had this car instead of that car. Or you would, um, you know, uh, this person is thinking bad thoughts about you, right? Have you ever had that experience? We all have, right? You walk into a room, somebody's giggling, somebody looks at you, and you immediately think, oh, I know what they're thinking. No, you don't. But we have the strong, sudden impulse. And you know what? It's never anything good, is it? It's never anything good. Where do you think that comes from? Right? That's why we have to discern our thoughts. But what happens is if we give ourselves to it, it begins to control us. It begins to manipulate us. You begin walking around saying things like, Oh, yeah, I often know what other people are thinking. Uh-oh. Now you're starting to get in trouble, especially if you really believe that about yourself. And I've met people who really believe that about themselves. Right? Um, or you can't go to sleep at night unless you do something you know you're not supposed to do. Or you can't. It starts to control you. Right? And then in the most extreme forms, it's insanity. Now, some people will say, yes, but aren't, you know, some of these things can be controlled by medication or drugs. And yes, of course, the biological reality and the spiritual reality interact. They're on top of each other. I was just, how many times, I, just this week, someone was telling me, a cancer patient, and a pretty advanced state of cancer. Um, and the uh, doctor said, um, uh, why don't you try this? And so he, she tried it, and it worked. And the cancer started to shrink. And so she goes to the doctor and says, why is this? And the doctor says, we don't know. We don't know why. Right? Another guy... He had a, a nervous condition where something was wrong with his brain and, it, and certain muscles in his body uh, contract without control. It's kind of like a mini uh, epilepsy. Um, and so they tried like over several years, everything, everything, everything. So he gives up and he starts saying the Jesus prayer every day, right? Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, the sinner, for 10, 15 minutes every morning. And it starts to go away. Well, why is that? You know? I don't know. Because the spiritual world and the chemical world, they're not like it's either spiritual or biological. It's not like that. It, they kind of interact with each other in ways we don't understand, right? So sure, I've seen some pretty crazy people, you know, if they, they just take their pill, they do a lot better, right? There's, there's physical and spiritual interaction here. But it's not one or the other, right? We've got to do the real spiritual work of discerning our thoughts, right? Um, I've often said to people in confession, when they confess and say, oh, I had this terrible thought. I always tell them, you are not your thoughts. Thoughts occur to us, but they don't become us unless we embrace them. Right? So, let, may God help us learn to discern our thoughts and uh, not give in to uh, thoughts that are destructive and not helpful, but rather call out to God, just like that, for help. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.